I'm Zoe and I'm Giuseppe's research assistant. I took CLAW 1001 last year in semester one and today I'm here to talk to you about a student's perspective on approaching CLAW 1001. The important thing is that you should get involved in lectures. I know lecturers always say that but from my point of view I've got a couple of good reasons why. Firstly, it takes more fun. Giuseppe's lectures are a lot of fun and I'm not the only one I'm sure who thinks that and who looks forward to them. So, you know, bring up something controversial, something in the media maybe that's to do with contracts or a case that you might have heard of, or clarify something that maybe um, Giuseppe went over but you don't understand. Um, secondly, there's no point going to the lecture, listening, kind of not understanding it and then walking out because if you get home and then you have to um, go to your textbook, go to the lecture slides, try and find out what's um, the answer to your question, it's, you're making a lot more work for yourself than if you just asked it during um, the lecture. And there are so many exceptions in um, contracts, so you know, if you ask while you're there, you might not get the answer that you're expecting and maybe it will be something that other people are interested in as well. So you might as well ask while you're there. Um, finally, on that point, um, lecture recordings don't include the whole experience of the lecture and realistically, if you don't go to the lecture, you're unlikely to catch up on the recording. So you might as well go, get involved, you know, ask a question or two and have fun while you're there. The next important thing I um, had to think about was your study notes. So. One of the great things about CLAW 1001, which I'm sure you're all um, really looking forward to, is the open book exams. But something that's a bit misleading about that is the word book. You don't want to be relying on your textbook at all. Because if you get into the exam and you're trying to flick through a book, I'm pretty sure it's about that big, um, to find things, it's going to freak you out because you actually don't have that long. So it's important that you take in study notes that you've made yourself. Um, a few things that I did that were helpful, um, I'm going to tell you, take what you like from it. This might not be helpful for everyone. So firstly, make your notes clear and direct. Don't write unnecessary things. Think to yourself, would this piece of information be useful during an exam? Because if you're writing unnecessarily long definitions that you're not going to use in a problem question, it's a waste of space in your notes. Um, Secondly, divide everything by headings. So start with, say, offer, and underneath that you would put um, the different elements that you need to cover when you're looking at whether or not there's an offer. That way, when you get a problem question, you can literally go through your notes as if they're a checklist and think, you know, does this element apply? Have I covered this issue? Um, under each of those headings then, ensure that you have the relevant authority or the relevant case. So, um, because you might remember a particular case, uh, but you don't remember what it relates to. So, if you have the case there and probably highlight it, I found highlighting very useful, then during the exam it's just easy when you're looking through your notes to, to find things really quickly because that's what's important during an exam. Um, next, I used um, tabs actually because if you have um, a couple of pages of notes and you need to get to something quickly, having on the side offer, acceptance, whatever tabs are useful, um, you can just flip to where the relevant section is. Um, and pretty much structure it so that you can use it as how to deal with a problem question. Rather than just information, have a process perhaps. If you want to write um, a checklist, that could be useful on the front of your notes. So um, each, each element, each element of offer, each element of acceptance, so that when you're in the actual exam, it almost gives you a bit of a guideline of what you have to cover in the problem question. And that way you can hopefully deal with everything you need to when you're answering a question. Okay, um, another thing I found helpful was, and I'm sure you might have been told this already, but as soon as you get into the exam and you read the question properly, um, I found highlighting throughout the question 
um, things that you think are the major legal issues, um, things that are in contention, things that are a bit murky, a bit controversial that you're going to have to look at. Highlight these things and if you're allowed to write during that time, um, make a little note of what issue you think it is, you know, what part of the offer. Um, that makes it quicker when you're starting um, to um, determine what are the most important things. Um, I also found that doing a, a quick little plan, and by that I mean, you know, maybe max 10 dot points of headings of what you want to cover in your question was really useful. So um, when you're dealing with acceptance, first applying objective tests, so you might just write acceptance test. And maybe if the test, um, if there's some issue in that that you've seen in the question already, you could jot that underneath as well. Um, and that will make sure that you can also divide your time uh, throughout the exam because you don't want to just get through whether or not there was a valid offer, do that in you know extreme detail, cover it really well, not get to acceptance not get to all the other issues because you might have done one part really well but you're sacrificing a lot of marks. So definitely a little plan is um, a really good start in an exam. Uh, when you're studying for the um, mid-semester exam, uh, definitely do your tutorial questions if you haven't already. But I also found that you could go back to the tutorial question without the answer in front because that's kind of useless. Um, and pretend that you haven't looked at them before or even if you remember what was talked about, just try and scaffold an answer as if you were in an exam condition. Um, Giuseppe also uh, might upload some practice questions online to Blackboard, so definitely do them and try and um, go step by step of what issues you would cover in each question. Um, and if you feel like it's too much and you're struggling and it's just really overwhelming, just try and step by step apply each element that you've looked at in class. And if you don't know what you're saying, always, um, or you don't think you know what you're saying rather, always um, use the IPAC method because I know it's already probably been drilled into you. But if you have, if you make a point, and you're not really sure about it, um, if you've backed it up with an authority, with a case, and then you've drawn a conclusion from it after applying it to the facts, what you're saying is a lot more convincing than just saying the point by itself. Um, the other thing that um, is important there is that when you're looking at cases, think to yourself, not necessarily is my case exactly like this other case because more than likely it's not going to be. Cases all have differences in facts and you might think, oh my god, this is totally different, don't know how to deal with it. It's um, also just as useful and shows you understand things if you draw a contrast with cases. So if there's a case where the facts were slightly different, perhaps you could say that in your situation the facts were slightly different to um, the facts of another case and therefore that means that the conclusion is different or that the facts were slightly different but not enough to bring a different um, conclusion. So don't be um, overwhelmed by differences in fact and remember that you can draw contrasts to um, principles from other cases. So pretty much in summary, although a lot of it's probably uh, general knowledge to some of you or seems pretty obvious, um, I would say the most important things are getting involved in the lecture, um, organising your study notes so that they're useful in an exam, not just a collection of all the information that you've looked at, um, studying for the exam by doing problem questions, um, don't get overwhelmed in the case analysis assignment and um, make sure your research is focused and always stick to the IPAC method. And um, hopefully that's of some use to you and um, good luck for exams and the assignment and have fun in CLAW.